Iowa farmers have been crushed by his tariff war with China, and no one knows better than the folks in Iowa. He thinks that being tough uh, is great. Well, it's really easy to be tough when someone else absorbs the pain. Uh, farmers, manufacturers, the automobile industry. The fact is, uh, he backed off this threat on tariffs with Mexico lately because uh, he uh, realized that um, he was likely to lose Michigan, Ohio, and Iowa. All of a sudden, he has, as we say in southern Delaware, had an altar call. He's seen the Lord. And, uh, but make no mistake, uh, if, uh, if in fact uh, things get tough again, he's going to start to threaten tariffs again. Uh, and uh, to him, American workers, in my view, are just a pawn. They're pawns in his game. And let's talk a little bit about China, because China poses real challenges to the United States and uh, uh, some ways a real threat to the United States. But Donald Trump is only exacerbating the threat and the danger. But the reason I find myself optimistic is that I made a point I've been making a long All right, you're listening there to the former Vice President Joe Biden, who's in Atumna, uh, Atumwa, Iowa. And this is the battle, really, between Joe Biden and President Trump today. I want to bring in uh, Brianne Fonnen-Steele. She is the chief politics reporter for the Des Moines Register. And it's, it's really interesting to be watching this dialogue in a way going on. We just heard from President Trump. He was on the South Lawn and he hit Joe Biden so many times. And you hear Joe Biden firing back from Iowa, but he's also, Brianne, making this appeal to farmers there, to growers there when it comes to tariffs. And this was a similar appeal that President Trump made to farmers in Iowa saying, you know, we gave them uh, this money, which was really a, a way to make sure they weren't hit by tariffs. What is your assessment watching this appeal that both of them are making? Well, I think he's really trying to tap into um, this discontent that a lot of Iowa farmers are feeling right now. Certainly the tariffs have been really difficult for them, but on top of that, there's been flooding across the state. It's just been one thing after another for Iowa farmers. And so for Joe Biden to speak directly to them and to say, look, this president is using you as a pawn is, is something that could be resonating here. A lot of farmers tell us over and over again, look, we're, you know, we're Republicans, we support the president, we hope that this works out in the end, but we don't know how much longer we can keep this up. It, it's really hurting our bottom line. And so now Joe Biden to be here physically present, making this appeal to them um, could resonate. And I want to play as well a moment. There was a moment where there was a heckler. I believe it was uh, an anti-abortion rights heckler at Joe Biden's event. Let's listen to this moment. No, no, that's okay. No, no, no. This is not a Trump rally. Let him go. It's that was pretty interesting to see him. He's trying to draw this contrast between, obviously, you know, President Trump sometimes eggs on his supporters uh, at rallies. We've seen even some hecklers be injured at rallies. Uh, what is, is he appealing to Iowa Nice here? What is this? Iowa Nice is definitely a thing. And I think we saw this from the very beginning. You know, his first speech here in Iowa after declaring his candidacy, he said, look, we're better than this. We can rise above. We need to restore the moral clarity of this country. And so that's certainly a message that I think we're going to be seeing throughout his campaign. And this was an opportunity for him to demonstrate that here and contrast it with President Trump. The, and obviously the president's trade war with China has been hitting Iowa uh, because this is one of the top producers of soybeans, a big export, uh, exporter to China. You, you talked about the farmers and how they... Actually, hold on just a moment, Brianne. Let's listen to the former vice president. That's how we got to where we are. And so, folks... Folks, we got to build an economy that rewards work, not just wealth. We got to return the dignity of work. Of work. You know, uh, the... Uh, and I think that... Look, I, I believe that the president is literally an existential threat to America for three reasons. One, uh, he is a genuine threat to uh, our, uh, our core values. And if you wondered about that, remember what happened in Charlottesville. I never thought I'd see that happen in my lifetime again. 
You had people come climbing out of the fields and un from under rocks, carrying torches, contorted faces, chanting the same anti-Semitic bile that was chanted in Europe and in Germany in the 30s. Same exact language. Carrying, carrying Nazi flags, accompanied by white supremacists, accompanied by the Ku Klux Klan, and confronted by decent people who said, not in my city. And what happened? When he was asked to comment on it, he said, quote, there were very fine people in both groups. No president of the United States, Democrat or Republican, has ever, ever, ever said something like that. Never. And it was a response heard round the world, round the world. But most importantly, it was a response heard by our children. Our children were listening. The idea that we give credit. Look, folks, America was built in the way we were built, basic core values, decency, honor, leaving no one behind, realizing that there are things that are bigger than you in America, that we have to get together, we have to co cooperate. But this is a guy who does everything to separate and frighten people. It's about fear and loathing. It's about what he, the way he calls people the names he calls them. No president has done something like that, for God's sake. I mean, it's bizarre, and it's damaging. And so I think he's genuinely a threat to our core values, and he's a threat to our standing in the world. On the D-Day ceremonies, the D-Day ceremonies, it was astounding to me that he was tweeting attacks on everybody, from the mayor of London to uh, Bette Midler. He found time to go after Bette Midler, for God's sake, in the middle of the D-Day ceremonies, for real, not a joke. And, uh, and instead of repairing the relationships with our allies, he's continued to damage them. You know, think about this. No president of the United States has ever, 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 since the end of World War II, we built that Atlantic Alliance and NATO, ever threatened to leave NATO. Never gone after our allies, embracing dictators and thugs, from Putin to Kim Jong-un, calling them my friends, sending love while he's sticking his, poking his finger in the eye of our allies. What's going on here? This is really dangerous stuff, and it's not easy. He's a threat, in my view, a threat to our core values. And folks, the fact of the matter is that four years of Donald Trump will be viewed as an aberration in American history. Eight years, eight years will fundamentally change who we are as a nation and how we're viewed around the world. We're not only the most powerful nation in the world, We've led America, we've led the world not by the example of our power alone, but by the power of our example. That's why the rest of the world has followed us, because of our values, who we are, who we say we are, decency, honor. And it is being absolutely thrashed around the world. 